Hello. Hi, everyone. And hi, Danielle. How's it going? It's going pretty good. How about you? Doing well. I'm really excited about class today. Hi, everyone. I am Rachel <laughs> Siegel from Sam's Bead Shop, and I am joined by Danielle Wicks, the incredible designer uh, and educator. And today she's going to show us how to make a leather wrap bracelet using beads from the August 2023 Sam Speed Box that we designed with you. So this is, yes. this is meant to be. <laughs> yeah, we got to work with Danielle to decide what beautiful colors and shapes would go into our August box. And as we were doing that, we're like, oh, you want to do stuff that like is going to, um, that like is going to lend to a project and that like folks can like easily make something from this box. And you were telling us like, you've been making leather wrap bracelets for a while. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Gosh, going on seven years now. Yeah, it's an old favorite. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Would you show us um, what that one looks like there? Yeah, so this one, I love the way we did this box because it's, um, mm -hmm. I like the project focus. Sometimes yeah. I get, you know, I get excited. I start choosing beads. I don't always have something in mind. This one, we, we chose these beads with intention, knowing what kind of what we wanted to do with them. And yeah. so this is a two twice around the wrist wrap. Um, it's, uh, got an apple blossom button in copper Such a and button. the leather is, and everything's in your box that, um, we used all the beads and, um, the leather and the button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All and, folks need are some of these, some basic tools and that you'll go over in a moment, but, oh, yeah. it is so pretty. And you like really were playing around with some of the designs, right? Of like what to. I was, yeah, I was trying to make it a really interesting, um, I didn't do anything to, um, like I kept it beginner friendly because you know mm -hmm. you can take these to crazy places. Like you can make them mm -hmm. wavy by putting very oh. large beads and then tapering down to one and then going back to make like almost an eye shape. Um, so there's okay. really no limit. This, to is, this is level one of what you can do. Yeah, it's always cool. easier. Like I would tell people if you've never done a wrap before, it's gonna be easier for you if you try to match your leather uh, diameter basically the height of it to the um, height of your bead. So this measurement here, mm. and it gets challenging when it's possible and you can absolutely do this, but it gets challenging when you start using the bigger beads um, okay. because they uh, are harder to center. They're harder to keep your tension becomes really important because they can kind of like fall down or scrunch up. And, um, and so there's a real science to how you do these layers and the pattern to make them both bendable. Like we can really fold this a lot. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, a there's some rhyme and reason to it that we can talk about. Cool. As we go. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that, that is what we are going to learn how to make today. Um, all of the beads and the leather and the buttons, yep, are in the box. So if you want to grab one of our extra August bead boxes, you can, or grab, we, we have some of these items available on their own. Um, but yeah, could you tell us what other materials folks will need? Yes. Yeah. So for starters, you're going to need something to stitch with thread wise. So the leather is included and that's your base, but you'll need some thread and the thread is really, um, it's forgiving. You can use mm -hmm. almost anything as long as it fits your beads, really. So okay. um, I'm just going to use some wildfire today. So I'm going to 06. I'll work with black so you can see better. But on some of my other samples, I worked with other colors. Like I did a beige wildfire on the finished one I got, I got down there. Um, I also use some size B nylon beading thread. That's what mm -hmm. you're seeing here. That can be really oh, fun. Cool. And you can try to make it blend. Like that's what I was doing here. I was trying to match the color or you can make it different to stand out and be part of the design to have that thread pop the color. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. And I've got some fire line in black. So I'll have some cool contrast as well. That's what I'm using. All right. What else will we need? Cool. You'll need a beading needle. And, um, Again, this is one where you can kind of get away with a lot of different stuff. I'm just going to use a regular hard beading needle, size 10. Nice. I've got that too. I'm, if you can't tell, I'm going to try to make along today. I'm very, I, I mean, I want one of these bracelets for myself. <laughs> oh, good. Well, yeah. I'll be sending you these too. But yes, you'll oh. have one. You <laughs> so, but my wrist will be full. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you'll need some scissors, of course, to cut. You could also use some flush cutters. So scissors or okay. flush cutters, whatever you got, it's going to be great. Um, and then you're going to need some other kind of uh, a tape measure is always handy mm. or ruler, something like that. Yes. Um, optionally, and this is something I do do, um, some glue. And okay. it's just for the knots on your thread. 
you don't have to use it. You can get away without mm -hmm. it. I've never had one come apart, but I do usually glue if I'm going to sell them just because I feel better. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and then there's a board. Now, this is where you can really improvise a lot. Um, this is one of these like craft trays. And let me show you the one that I've got a bracelet on to you. Um, this is actually something that you can do like a box lid or a boots box lid. So, so the real the real thing you want is something where there's a there's a lip that kind of you mm -hmm. can get your hands under when you're working. But if you don't have something like this, you could just get a board, like even just a macrame board, um, and that will work fine too. You can use that. I just grabbed a plastic tub that we have. This one's pretty <laughs> sturdy when I like doesn't like bend in. So I'm gonna try this, see how it goes. But yeah. I made sure it, it's. it's it's got some space to work, so we'll see. Yeah, you can get your hands <laughs> under it. You got it. Yeah. All yeah. right, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> cool. Cool. And then you might need three rubber bands. You might need four rubber bands to get around the, the height of that box. Um, but yeah. Any old rubber bands um, that you've got handy, um, what Sweet. those are used for is to suspend with tension. So here's the front. I'm going to try to hold that. All right, let me make you there. bigger there. Okay. Here you go. So you got this kind of like attached like that. And then what you can do is use the rubber band <laughs> to attach top and bottom of your design. And I'll show you guys how I do all that like, um, tying there. And that's that's a really mm -hmm. kind of a tried and true method. It's a, I think this is how most people do their bracelets. Um, a lot of the other designers do it this way. It's just kind of like a, um, a cool way to give yourself some tightness, right? So that that yeah. leather's being held really tightly, it makes it easier to get your stitches nice and even. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, how do we? Of anything. Perfect. All right. I, you've got your tools. I've got all the supplies as well. Um, yeah. How do we? Let's start setting it up. How do we put these rubber bands together? All right. Let's start with the leather. Um, you know, actually, okay. we can start with the rubber bands. That's a good idea. Oh, either way. Either way. Um, in the, in it's kind of like. Uh, the, the, the length is independent of how your setup um, works. So let me show you what I got going on here. So for mine, what I found really worked was I needed about three rubber bands. My rubber bands are, when they're not stretched out, they're about three inches. If you like kind of measure them like that. Um, but you'll just have to play with that because everyone's going to have a different rubber band and a different length of, yeah. you know, surface. But try to make it about the length from that edge all the way around the back to the side. You you want to have to stretch it to do that, but you don't want to stretch it mm -hmm. to the point where you're going to launch it into the stratosphere. It has to be like <laughs> yeah, stretchy, but not insanely stretchy. You know what I mean? Okay. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> don't get, don't oh, let it go flying. Them. When they snap back, it hurts. And it sometimes it'll leave. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually did that recently and I injured my finger and it was like, oh, oh no. Yeah. I used to do it all the time. I've gotten better about it. But yeah. So um, let me show you guys the Lark's knot. What do you do with all these rubber bands? Okay. So um, my board is just here still. I've got it on my lap. What I'm going to do is take one and let's set that one aside. Take the other one and then just bring it through and hold that loop open, the one that we just brought through. Bring the other end through that loop. And when you pull tight, they'll connect. So you get this nice little stretchy band. Okay. And then you want to bring your board over and just put it here and bring it to the other side. And it looks like these rubber bands, I'm going to get, get away with using only two. It doesn't always work that way for me. My last one, um, it looks like on my last one, I needed three. They must have been a little smaller, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Would you show us it again with just some other rubber bands? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just had it. And you said this is a, do you say it's a Lark's knot? Is the type I think of it's knot? a Lark's knot. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Where you, and we're, we're going to be doing a lot of Lark's knots. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Of, we'll be experts. Staples of it. But um, you'll just take, take one rubber band like this and there's the other one and just bring one end of it through the other. And then I'm going to take this end and bring it through this loop, capturing that side. Just like that. And you get a little connection there. When you stretch it, it'll actually stay like that. I have this one that I did a while ago. I can't even get that one undone. It's tight. 
Yeah. And I have bands sized for different boards because sometimes I use like ring trays or whatever foam boards and whatever it is I'm trying to do. This works for other things besides leather wrap bracelets. It works for macrame designs too. Cool. So All right. A, well, I, yeah, I did just two and I think mine also is going to work with just two. These are pretty big rubber bands. So I'm going to give it a try. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. You'll know for sure when you try it. And if you need another one, just put another one on. Perfect. So um, switching gears for a minute, I'm going to grab leather. I'm going to start with a new box. Now I have a lot left for my other box, but I did use all the leather. I was able to make two, two bracelets with what I have. You just need an extra button, right? Just one extra button was all I needed. Yeah. But here's the leather you get. It's generous. You get a lot. Yeah. I think we, we put uh, two meters in each box. That's great. Yeah. Also, we know, you know, sometimes you make a mistake, you tie things in the wrong spot. It's nice to have a little, little extra. And uh, I forgot to mention, we did do a write-up um, with some pictures. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to memorize any of this stuff. And I, I will put it on my website later. I haven't done it yet, but you guys have it but on. It's, on. it's on ours. Yeah. So do you check out, I think like the first link in, in the description of the video, head over to see like the inspiration for the August box that also has the PDF. Yeah. It does. Oh, okay, cool. So that's where yeah. you guys can find this PDF. So you don't have to take notes or anything. All right. So um, the measurement that I found works really well, and it gives you a little extra, which extra is good, is um, you decide what length you'd like your bracelet to be. So for a double wrap, you want that to go around your wrist twice. So it's going to be for a seven inch bracelet, that would be what, 14 inches, right? So that math is simple. And then you'll want to... Um, double that because it's, of course, it's worked doubled, right? Mm -hmm. And then add another 15 inches to that and cut. And that okay. extra 15 inches will give you what you need to have enough maneuver for knots and to be able to um, have this overlap because when you're wearing it, it overlaps, right? So it's got to have just a little bit extra so that it can connect. But you're basically going for beaded length to center of button 14 inches or so if you want seven. So I like always make my bracelet seven and a half. So should I base, do my math based on that? You can, or um, what you can do is, is, is adjust as well. Like for okay. example, this one here, whenever I measure these, um, I'll start with the center, center of the button. And then, so for me, I was going for six and a half. So I'm looking at 13 and then 14. So mine's adjustable mm -hmm. from six and okay. a half to seven. So let's see. So let's, I'll go with seven. Um, is there, are we, you're saying, should I go up or down for my seven and a half? It can't hurt to have, now? yeah, it can't hurt to go up because what, oh, what you okay. can do is as, as you're like, like when we get to the end with this one, we'll do one last little measure and we'll say, okay, if I start my taper down here and my button knot is here and my first button loops here is my second button knot, you'll measure from the center to the center of your button and you'll know if that yeah. Three, and you can do that in progress as we're going. So extra can't hurt. When in doubt, okay. you know, add a little so more. For your math, um, if I, so I'm going to go eight inches. So eight times two is 16. And yep. then I'm going to add 15. So 31 inches is what I am <laughs> going to cut. Okay. Cool. And I'm going to do that same thing here off camera. See if I can get my 14, 14, and then 15 more. Bravely cutting. Here we go. <laughs> and then we'll need our button. Let me jig through here and just find the button really quick. Okay. While I'm here, I'm going to grab the beads too. All right. So there's my button. And we're just going to... Um, Bring that on to the leather cord. Okay. So just put through one side. And I just grab the other end, hold them like this, and just bring it to the center. And for you, are you doing, did you, so wait, we did our measurements for a single wrap bracelet, right? That's where we just cut. Oh, I did measurements for a double, you but you could. You, you did, can do a what I, I did single, right? By, by doing the math that I did. Cause I did eight inches times two plus 15. I think I'll be doing, I think this one will end up single. 
which is which oh worked. yeah yeah so i measured 14 times two because i'm going got to got it because you took your measure. double length and times by two okay yeah got it. so yeah. you can all take your wrist and then multiply it okay I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. Cool. Yeah. All right. I've got it. I'm going to go for single wrap. It'll just, I'll get it done sooner. <laughs> exactly. No, that's cool. And the single wrap ones, that's the very first ones I ever sold were single wraps. Everyone like those too. They just, um, mm -hmm. they're simple. It's just one little, yeah. yeah, that's what's in style right now. So. Perfect. Okay. I've got my button. I'm with you. And so right now it's just kind of loose on there. It's at the midpoint and I, I kind of pull on it and warm it up a little bit. I do I do think the leather performs better. It's it's a natural product, so just getting it soft. I don't know, just kind of pinching it a little. Mm. And it also kind of puts a little crease there, so my button stays put while I'm doing the next step. Um, and then what I'll, it's kind of hard to explain. I might have to do this twice, but I'm going to do an overhand knot. And I do my overhand knots kind of like with the button as the lead, meaning it's the part I'm going to maneuver through. So it's kind of like a, maybe four fingers here, bringing it around passing it under the cords, right, right there. Mm -hmm. And then lead that button through that hoop. And then just kind of try to keep that knot toward the button. It doesn't have to be super close. Air is good because you want it to have some swing and some sway to it, right? And then just kind of tighten it up. And you'll get something that looks like that. Sweet. And that's the easy way to do it. For those of you out there that enjoy doing special knots like barrel knots and things like that, you can absolutely do that here too. Works great. Okay. Good to know. Um, I, I do sometimes do a barrel knot there because it um, means you can slide it a little bit if you want to get that kind of like um, position perfect. But this one just landed, so I'm really good with that one. Nice. So that's all you got to do there. Now travel down to the bottom of your leather and do the same thing there. Use this as your lead and then just, you know, bring it around like that, bring that through. This one does not have to be pretty or even that tight. This is just going to hold everything in place while we're working and we're going to take it apart at the end to get the rubber band off of it. I'll show all that in a second, but this is just a, something to secure to for now. So that's, and just make it kind of toward the bottom. It doesn't have to be measured. Just awesome. Kind of like that. So, so far we have our button on, an overhand knot at the button. We've got a knot at the end that's also an overhand knot. And that's all ready to go. Got my board and my rubber bands that I put together. And so the first thing you'll want to do is take your, it doesn't matter which end, just take your rubber bands and take one end. And we're going to kind of do the same thing we did before with um, when we were doing the Lark's knots, but basically just bring um, bring the rubber band through like that. Mm -hmm. And then bring it the other end of it through the loop we made there and pull. And when you do that, you'll get this secured and it'll probably be lopsided like this. If you want the knot to sit in the center, See how it's kind of hanging out like that? Mm -hmm. I often will take those little ends there, and just poke them through the center so that they stay like that when I pull my Lark's knot. Nice. So you get something that looks like that. Do you want me to do that one more, one more time? I think, I think we got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and there's a replay too, so. All right, so now we've got our really long, like, uh, apparatus here to put it onto. So, <laughs> in this part, you know, just go slow, be careful, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't let the fun. rubber bands fly. Yeah. Well, and plus, this button, it goes right for your eye. I'm not joking. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Everyone be very careful, please. <laughs> Do I've this at your own risk. <laughs> so I'm always scared. <laughs> but um, decide which part of your button you think is the prettiest and have that be the front. Not button, not. Oh, okay. sides. Not, not have two different sides. I think this one, I like yeah. that in the back. That's what's going to go on my wrist. And okay. my Although these are usually reversible. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, go ahead and secure your button here. Just hold it. And then I'm keeping the strands straight as I come down toward the bottom. Mm. I'm just going to go around. And here at the, at the back, 
just keep keep bringing your rubber band around the back. Let me make that bigger. And oh. come around the front of it. And bring that rubber band to kind of sit under your button. And it'll hold. It'll do that for you. And you know you got it if you can like play it like a guitar. <laughs> and you, you can slide it. And this is how you make uh, wraps that are longer than your board length. It's absolutely slidable. So here at the bottom, I've got leather overlapping. I must have made this one just a little bit longer than my previous ones. So my leather is going all the way around the back like that. Oh, okay. So yeah, you Which just adjust totally your length of rubber bands. If I don't need it at the end, I'll trim it. But it's actually totally okay that I did that. So this is here. I can really sh forget. show mine. So here's here's what I've got. Oh yeah. Got it hooked up. And it's Brilliant. going all the way around. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Ready to make with you. Yay. Okay, so we get to cut more measuring. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to use, um, honestly, so this length isn't super important. It can be whatever you'd like it to be. It depends on how much you are willing to work with a really long strand versus have to add thread. Um, the chances of getting knots are high <laughs> if you go real long. So, um I would say 120 inches is maybe the max you should go or so, um, but it, there's mm -hmm. there's no set rule there. I mean, whatever your wingspan times two, this is going to be worked again as a doubled. So unlike most of the beading weaving stitches we've done, this one we're going to double our thread. Okay. So whatever you cut, you double it. So my wingspan being 60, I'll cut 120 and we'll call that good and I'll add thread when I run out. Sounds good. And adding thread is done exactly the same way. We're going to show starting it here. Adding it, you just repeat that all over again. You just leave the old working thread in place. Repeat what we're about to do and finish your bracelet. And then at the end, when we show weaving in that last part of the working thread, that's the same thing. You just go back and do that wherever in the past you left. So it's, um, it's the same. Okay, so I'm going to cut my strand here. And it's a lot. It's a lot to work with. It's a lot of um, mm -hmm. thread, but it's it's going to be um, much more manageable when we fold it. And just real quick, I'm finding this in Jane's pliers because I want to flatten my end to make my needle go on easier. There we go. Okay, beading needle, got that. And. And once you've got that threaded, this is um, got to go to the midpoint of your thread. So let's set this aside really quick. I'm just going to slide this all the way down. Maybe I'll just poke it into the mat now. Find my ends. It's a lot of thread. So this is a kind of labor intense, but you can get your ends together like that and hold them. And it can yeah. help you just find your midpoint by stretching it out, and then just slide the needle down. With wildfire, it'll stick. You know, your needle doesn't just slide. So you got to kind of help it. Yeah, mine does that too with the fire line. Does it? The size yeah. B will just fall to the, mm -hmm. fall to the end. And it's harder to thread for some reason. I've always found baffling. All right. And so um, here's my ends. So these are the two ends of the thread. I've got the needle all the way down here at the midpoint. And again, that's doubled and these are the ends of my strands. We're gonna do an overhead knot, overhand knot with these. So kind of like we did with the bottom of our leather, actually exactly like we did. Just bring that around. And I'll usually just pinch it like that, put those tails through the, the loop and then pull tight. And there's your knot, you can do something like that to make it tight. And there it is. So that's like how you start sewing, right? If you were going to yeah. stitch a hem or something, that's kind of exactly the same thing. And what's the reason that we're using um, doubled up thread for this project? It's um, it's to make it secure to your leather, gives you mm -hmm. a way to do a large snot. And then it okay. also, um, the the way these get worn, they, um, they're strong. They're, well, I had a mm -hmm. lady who brought me one um, that she wanted repaired and the thread had never broken. But what had happened is um, I had used some 
uh, beads where the color came off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But she went and chlorinated pools with it and stuff and like went yeah, to the yeah. ocean and she's like, I never take it off. I love it. I want you to just fix it. Um, can you change the beads to, you know, like natural stones? So they don't. Yeah. So anyway, that, yeah. but the thread so that helps make some more secure. Yeah. yeah. And it was nylon cool. thread too. It's like, oh, pretty good. <laughs> so I've got my needle here and um, I'm going to go under the first strand here. This is so, this is my, um, my left side. I'm just going under under the left side strand. If I can make that visible. There. And then pull all the way till you can get your knot to where it's visible. So like right there. Good. Sounds good. Um, no, you you keep going. Don't wait for me. I'm just looking to make sure. <laughs> I was like, it's too fast. Um, so what you'll have here is you know you've got this knot right, and we have our thread. It's coming under just the left-hand side strand of leather. Um, and I'm gonna go back through, see how there's a loop here? We got our knot, mm. I'm gonna go back through the loop, just kind of under the knot there, and pull that all the way through. So you see how it's gonna lark's knot? And it's mm -hmm. just gonna attach our thread just like that. That might be good to show again if that's, wouldn't be yeah, too sure. hard it's to easy do. easy to take off too. Okay, perfect. Just pull it off, it's also slidable. Oh, this is adjustable really nicely as you go. It's pretty cool. Okay. So um, I'm going to take my, my needle here and pass underneath the left-hand side. It doesn't matter which way you go. I I, I went this way this yeah, time. Yeah, you went the opposite, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Either is fine. Cool. The goal is to get your the goal is to get your needle back so that it's um, passing over the leather cord this time, just through this loop. Nice. And no matter which direction you go, we're going to be moving the direction of this knot anyway. But no matter what you do, you'll get this little lark's head knot. And now my tails are facing inside this time because I pulled it this way. But either way is fine. I'm just kind of going to end up moving around. You can pull it this way if you want. All right, I've got mine on too. And so you've got some, you know, um, a knot there that's pretty sizable, but it's still possible for us to hide it. I'll show you how we can hide it. Oh, cool. So um, I'm going to grab some seed beads and let's do the, the taper up. So let's dump in these out. What you want to do is just choose one seed bead for now. Like one color? Yeah, just one single seed bead. It can be any color. Oh, one bead. Got it. Got it. And then just bring that all the way down. Oops, I'm off camera. Sorry about that. And right now, I have everything for me is just kind of to the left. We need to pass the needle. At, once you've got your, your uh, bead on, this is this part's optional. Do this if you like it. Otherwise, just skip it. But you can bring both of those tails through your seed bead. And this is what I do just to get me some, um, save me time later with pulling those into the bead. Um, but you can always do this at the end. So. But you see how I'm pulling the working a tail thread apart? It brought that knot kind of into the bead a little bit. Mm -hmm. so if you like it, otherwise, just bring that bead down and then bring your needle under both cords. Okay. You pull all the way up, across. So when you do that, what's going to happen here with the bead is it's just going to go underneath those cords. And I'm going to help it sit in between the two from underneath. So the, the thread is passing underneath the leather cords. Mm -hmm. And that bead is just going to sit right there. And my tails are already pulled in just because I, I did that earlier. But if they weren't, the tails just might be hanging out and it would still work just fine. And then um, you'll want to bring your needle through that bead again, but this time you're going to pass over the leather on top. Okay. So starting to go through the bead here. And I hid my knot inside of it, so I'm going to have to maneuver around my knot. But it's totally doable. See, I've got that going through. And 
So this is the thread that's attached to my needle here. And this is the thread that's coming out of the bead and the tails. If you want, it can help this first pass if you just hold those. Just hanging those, hanging those out there. And then just pull through. And go slow because this is where knots happen. If I get knots, it's always in the last, or sorry, the first few rows. And you see I'm starting to get one here. That's why I'm holding this because now I can watch what I can do. Just pull this all out mm -hmm. and spin it out. So you can just use your fingers as you pull to keep from getting kinks. I'm going to make sure my tails are kind of pulled out there. And then just pull through. And one of my tails are just caught a little bit underneath. So I'm just helping you get up there. But that's kind of what you're going for. So, And later we can clean this up. I mean, you could weave this in now, but there's not much to go into. So what I usually do is just kind of leave it to hang out there. But if you want, you could put your glue on now. Um, I already hid my knot in the bead, but you can still kind of see the edge there where it is. You can put a dot of glue like right there and let that dry as you're working. I probably won't do that now. I'll just do it all at the end and let the piece yeah. dry all together, right? But that's something you can do if you're going to do like some of these. I used to have them on my desktop working in progress for like several days. So I would get stuff done <laughs> in the moment and just let it dry. All right. So there's the, there's the one bead. Is everything good with that? I can pull it out and do it yeah. again. No, I think we're good. Let's, yeah, let's okay. keep going. Okay. So bring the cords back under your leather. And anyone who's done looming, we're exactly, we're looming right now. That's what we're doing. The same thing. So just bringing the cords underneath it. And pick up two beads this time. So we're going to taper up to three beads. So just get those two beads on there. And again, just slide those down. And what else? I'm going to bring this down a little bit. It feels like it's just not able to see. Is that better? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So I'll just slide those to sit in between the two pieces of leather. And again, I'm working with that cord. It's underneath. I'm just using it to kind of pull and adjust. And once I'm happy with where they are, I'm just going to bring the needle over the cords, over the leather cords, um, through those beads. Over the right-hand side leather cord. Yeah, you'll be coming up. You'll be traveling from left to right underneath. And then when you're making your back pass over the cords, you're always kind of going from right to left. Um, cool. And I think even left-handed people work it that way. I was talking to somebody the other day about that who's left-handed. Oh, interesting. And I was curious if they loomed in the opposite direction. And she said she didn't. She just works with a different hand. It's kind of interesting to me because I think I would struggle to pull my cords with um, Yeah. With the right. Yeah, I would need to work my needle my right, with the hand that's dominant. And so I've got something going on here. Let's take a quick look at what I got. Making sure I don't get any knots. It's super tricky working with this much cord, but just go slow. And the cool thing is even if it gets like all jumbled, you can still fix it. Mm -hmm. Before you pull, better to do it before you pull tight. Yeah, better to find it early because it's tricky, but there we go. Okay. Do you, oh, do you want to pull it down? It got off camera. Oh, sorry about that. No problem. And if you get anything like where it's not doing exactly what you want, just pull each strand individually. And sometimes your tail threads are going to get in the way. Mine is doing that right now. It's one of my tail threads. Let me get that out of there. I should have let my tails be a little longer. Something I forgot in some of my old tricks, but I used to make my um, the space below my knot long enough to get it up under the rubber. Oh, the rubber band. okay. And that so that's gets it out of the way. Out of the way. Forgetting all my old things. I used, to, you know, I used to make so many of these. I had these little. Hey, tricks. no, that's that's already out of the way. Yeah, so that kind of worked. I should have done that earlier, but there we go. I made so many of these that, truth be told, I have not done this since. Um, well, so this one that we made for this project was one of the first ones I've made in like more than a year. Yeah. So 
Well, you've you just made so much. many. You get to where like, no, I would don't want to. Do would you post in gem chat after class, like some of the pictures of the bracelets you've made? You've just, I mean, yeah. over the years, you've made some gorgeous colors and pieces. Yeah, yeah, I will definitely share those. Yeah, I used to really love like a really beautiful check glass button and then mm -hmm. like just so many patterns and styles are so cool. Awesome. And so once you've got all of that pulled through, you just need to get three beads on. And again, I brought my cords under, under the leather. So my thread under the leather, leather cords. And then I'm bringing these three beads to kind of sit in between. And th these first few rows are tricky because they're, you're forcing a taper up, right? Mm -hmm. You'll get the hang of it. It just takes a little practice. And then I'm going to pass the needle back through those beads. And this time I'm keeping the everything over the leather cords. I'm just going to pull that through slowly. And so there's our taper up, all ready to go. Awesome. And so from here on, on, it's all patterns then that are completely up to you, like what you want to do. Some of the patterns that we did were, um, we started bringing on a tila and then doing a, a color block of seed beads and a tila. That's probably the simplest one to share first. That's a, yeah, let's start there. And for folks who, what is a tila bead for folks who may not know? Yeah, a tila bead is in your, in your um, box, it'll be labeled as a two hole tila mix, cappuccino mix. And it's a five millimeter square bead that has two holes in it. So the, um, the bead has these, is this a good one to see on? Maybe the beige is better. Um, yeah. Beige. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you can see how there's, there's two holes in it. And it's about um, mm -hmm. 1.5 millimeters thick and then a, it's a six or five millimeter square, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. About the same oh, so width as three seed beads. Oh, same. And then it's also the same thickness as our leather cord. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's where it all lines up. The, that was our master plan. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're using the 1.5 millimeter leather cord um, for folks who need to grab some more. We have it in lots of colors in the shop. Like you have a dozen choices. <laughs> I grabbed one of these. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, is that the dark brown? I oh, think it's so. Nice. It's the color that came in. Oh, in the box. box. So oh, then that's the warm is, brown. I think, yeah, it's the, the warm brown. Nice. And so, yeah, so let's bring on a tila bean. Um, okay. And so uh, I think it doesn't matter which side you pick up, but if you have a side you like better to be the front, then just go through it from left to right through the top hole. Okay. And if you, you need, they're kind of reversible, so it doesn't matter which side you go with. I'm just going to bring that down. Again, my cords are under underneath the leather here from the left to the right. And then just want to position the tila to sit underneath my seed bead zone. And I'm, I actually am, what I'm doing when I'm positioning it is I'm also putting some um, tension on this, this side of the thread to kind of pull it. And then again, we're just going to pass over the leather cords this time, but through the same hole of the bead. Oh, the same one. Okay. Yeah, same one. Just like with our seed beads, we were going back through the same, the same hole. And this one, we're going to go through the same hole. This, um, any two hole bead, you're going to work it as two rows. Mm. So there's, we're only done the top hole of this bead so far. We're kind of pretending it only has one hole at the moment. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we're just going to get that to sit like that. And the cool thing is, is you can get it to help stabilize the taper that you did. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to try to tilt my board a little bit or try to, I want to show you guys a view, a side view here, but yeah. I'm going to tilt it up a little bit. We're going to go um, around and under the leather cords again and through the second hole in the bead. And the best way to get to where you can see that and maneuver that is to push this tila bead down so that you can see the hole. Oh. Kind of like that. And so I'm gonna find the end of my thread here, way over here. And so again, I'm passing under the leather cords. 
and I'm going to go through the hole of the cube in there. This is the second hole. So another side view, look like that. Pull that all the way through and help it sit again, sit in between like that flat. And then just bring the needle through that bottom hole, that same one we're exiting but this time you're passing over the leather and try to be careful not to puncture the leather because that just scratches the coating on it. Okay. Yeah, I realized as I was going through one time, I just was like poking through the leather. I was like, wait, no, that's not right. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go stay over the leather as I head back. Oh, and I forgot to, I forgot to warn you about that because it's really easy to do. Yeah, they're sharp needles. Yeah. I wonder if maybe a looming needle would work but they're so long, you don't want something super long. So it's kind of tricky. Mm. You can work with the eye yeah. side, maybe. I don't know. No, you just got to watch out for it, for sure. Yeah. And so that's pattern one. What I did with pattern one was I started doing rows of seed beads that had different colors. So for example, um, let's check the timer. Ooh. Let me know when you want me to jump ahead. Um, okay. Yeah, let's, let's show some more rows first. Show some more rows. Okay. And the setup takes a long time, I think, to explain because it's kind of, it's a lot of stuff, right? I know it because, and then once you're there, this is the part that's going to start getting repetitive. This part takes a while. It's also the most enjoyable. It's really mm -hmm. fun. Um, and I, like I was saying earlier, I used to have these on the, on the table for a long time. They would sit there until something occurred to me and I would just be like stash diving all the time for like, oh, what's <laughs> Because you'll do maybe an, you know, maybe a one trip around the wrist repeat of a pattern, which I mean, you could do as long as you want, but I would usually do that. And then I would change it up because you get bored, right? Yeah. But it becomes this like stream of consciousness. And there were times when I would make one of these, not knowing exactly what beads were going in it yet. Yeah. You can just evolve as you, as you keep going. And yeah, I never made two of them. They've all been different. I just can't make the same one. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. So you can really treat this. For, like design on the fly just choose your beads as you go the order or if you prefer you can decide your pattern ahead of time either way yes exactly and we put in the handout um all of the patterns that we came up with using the um, sam's bead box beads for august 2023 so you can see those i missed a bead i'm just going back through there we go. okay That's the other thing when you're working with sets of threes and twos and whatnot, you can accidentally miss one. But so what I did was I kind of just color blocked it. Yeah. I ended up doing it almost ombre now. Three. And maybe. would you, yeah, after, once you do that, once you've added those seed beads, I think let's, it'd be great to show another Tila bead. Um, and then maybe in the pattern, you can mix in some like saucers or pinch beads and show people how to use those. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so I'm um, picking up another Tila. This is just through the top hole. I'm going to bring that underneath the cords. And I'm going to help it sit in between. And I'm also going to snuggle it up underneath those last little row of seed beads that I've got going. And then I'm going to pass back through the hole, the same hole that thread is ex exiting from. But I'm passing through now on top of the leather cords. And this thing I'm doing on the side with my fingers, I'm always doing that to keep it from tangle. Just kind of pull like that. And then um, take a look at the screen where you can see me. If you start getting this, do you guys see how this is starting to spin? You the, can hold your up, thread. Yeah, hold it up in the sky, let your needle fall <laughs> the, and let gravity unspin you. Especially oh. if you're working with size B. Size B nylon is going to do this to you like crazy. You can just let it helicopter itself out and i and is that just to make it out. neater or so it's not so thick um, or less likely to knot on you because when it starts uh, to do that, okay that spinny thing like see how it's spinning it's still doing it a little bit here i didn't do as good yeah. but see how it's less it's more less likely, likely to get knotted on itself on got it and you'll know it's ready when when you pick it up like that and it starts the needle starts doing that at the bottom uh -huh. yeah it's unraveling yeah yeah <laughs> And so we've only done the top hole of this Tila. So once again, I'm going to just, just going to push it down so that I can see the second hole. And then I'm going to pass under the cords through that hole. Pull that tight. 
and then help that tila bead again sit in plane. And let's go through the hole. Another thing I'm doing is I'm kind of pushing up on the bead to get it so we're, I don't hit the leather when I'm going through the hole. And then when I release it, it kind of settles back down. Yeah, you're kind of pushing the beads up so they're almost above the leather, like a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That helps a lot, I think. I do that on Lumi too. It's interesting. So there's another tealy bead on there. And you see how it takes two rows to add those? Yeah. But we've got that. That one's good. And the next thing we've got to do is add something new. Let's change it up. So pattern two in the PDF used some fire polish mm. and seed beads. So I'll show that real quick. We'll show the saucers and the pinch and then we'll show the finishing. Cool. So it's coming right here. Um, what I did was I did one row of seed beads, just three seed beads, just to get us off from the tila bead. Whenever yeah. you're um, working with a square bead like that, or something that is two holes and it's connected, you you wouldn't ever want to put two telos right next to each other. You're always oh. going to want to put a, a row of seed beads or something round with just a single row, um, meaning a two hole bead or a bead that needs um, two passes through, that's going to yeah. make it less bendy. So if you do yeah. tila, 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 tila right next to each other and you put that on, they're going to, they're not going to. You don't get as much of a smooth circle. Yeah, so that's by just adding even just one row of seed beads between your tila, you'll get a much nicer bend to the bracelet. Oh, that's such a good yeah. tip. I love that. I made so many where I just wasn't happy with them when I took them apart like that. And the same is yeah. true for like the two hole check tile, like a checkmate tile. Mm -hmm. You'd want to do it like that too with, with those kind of beads. Um, super duos, all that. You want to definitely give yourself some space. Um, so I did a row of seed beads. And now um, here's a new pattern you can try. Grab a seed bead, let's do beige, and grab a three millimeter fire polish. There's two colors in your box. There's a, these, the current. Yeah, we have the, the copper and then that brown, darker brown roast leather kind of color. <laughs> and if you can get your needle through your gemstones, you can use a gemstone here too. Okay, so you just did one seed bead and one three millimeter fire polish. Yeah, and I forgot. I wanted to match the color of my seed beads for some reason. I thought I was using beige right now. But I'm only using <laughs> So I'm changing my mind. Hang on a second. Okay. <laughs> and then my um, flush cutters decided to travel off with my thread. <laughs> okay, so. Some funny stuff going on here with my thread. Okay, I had some spin to it. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's the worst. Okay, so let's do, um, I'm matching the row of copper that I did because that gives it kind of a cool look. I like to do the, okay. like, all the same color for this step. So they're kind of, kind of neat. So there's seed bead fire polish. So fire polish is about the same thickness as two seed beads. So we're just adding that one. Again, I'm just kind of holding the bottom thread, bringing the top thread through. Off camera, I'm doing see, Got my thread here. You're just holding that loop as it as it gets smaller. Yeah, just guiding it, you know, hoping knots don't happen. When your thread starts getting shorter, it doesn't, it's less likely to do that. So there's seed bead fire polish. Now pick up fire polish first and then seed bead. And slide that down. Again, I'm working under the leather cord right now. Wiggle those up in between, pass them over the cords through the beads. Okay, one more row of just three seed beads, and that is the end of that pattern. And I thought I'd bring the bracelet over to show what it looks like if you did it a lot, right? Okay, yeah. So the, from here, I would put another Tila under it. 
And so how that looks is you get um, a Tila and then one of these. See, they kind of checker like that. Yeah. Here's the color beautiful. box, three row CB. So we've done both of those now. So all we have left to do is the saucers and fire polish. Sorry, the uh, saucers and pinch beads. Okay. All right, so the pinch beads are kind of fun. Saucers are fun too. Um, well, let me show you really quick what the pinch beads will do. So when you first start sewing on your pinch beads, you have to secure um, the next row you do below them, kind of on top of them on one side. And if you mm. match that and stay consistent, you'll get an eyeball on the other side. <laughs> That's kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then in between those, I've just got little sets of three saucers. And so that whole cool. pattern is, is again, it's in the handout, but it's just three rows of seed beads, a pinch bead, three rows of seed beads, saucer. Three row pinch, three row saucer, all the way down. So that looks like, I've only got one row of seed beads here. I would probably do two more, but it'll still work. But this is all like totally up to you guys. Whatever you want to do, you can make any pattern you, that you want to. So this is a pinch bead going on. So there's one side done. And the peak is like right there. And the flat side is where my finger is underneath on the back okay get a row of seeds so i'm passing under kind of the way i end up doing this is i'm passing under and then i'll grab my beads over here so here's three more seed beads bring those on and they're coming up from under the leather right and you can help them like this just to kind of slide up and sit a little bit on top of the pinch bead. Mm -hmm. That's going to keep it from spinning on you. And then go through the three seed beads. And you got it. Awesome. And on the back side, it's going to look like that. That's cool. I like how that kind of mirrors the Tila with that flat surface. Yeah, it's really cool. And if you wanted to try doing like a, like a pattern around it, it would really, depending on what pattern you do, it could, you can flip them, right? You could do one where yeah. it's facing up, one where it's facing down. It's trickier to get them to face down, but you can do it. Um, the mm -hmm. way you would do it is you bring it on flat, like that, um, the flat side. And so you were just, you would just have to kind of help it sit when you bring it on at the stage, try to bring that kind of over the row above it. Yeah. And at first, it's still going to kind of flip on you. I haven't actually tried this yet. Let's see. But when I put on the next row of three seed beads, I'm going to make those go under it. So let's put on three seed beads here. Slide those down. And so I'm kind of forcing them to sit a little bit below the table of that bead. And right before I tighten it, I'm just going to give it a little nudge there. Okay. So that'll keep that one facing up. And it would look more striking if you spaced them by some rows. But see, you know, that one's going to stay facing up. And that one's yeah, that's up. cool. Looks a little weird like that, but it can imagine if it was like, yeah, just spacing it out a little more. Yeah. Yeah. And then the saucers are super easy. Uh, I am going to need one more row of seed beads. They um, are pretty wide. So let's get another one of these on. Okay. So the saucers, and again, these are the 2.5s, 2 by 5 right here. And you can do two or three. I actually accidentally on the other sample over here did two, 
And then on the original, I did three. They both okay. look cool. They both looked a little different, but they're both working. They both look neat. So here's three. Oops. And remember to go under, which I did not. And that helped those sit in between the two leathers. Going through the hole there. And that looks so cool. So you just chase that with some seedly grows, maybe some tea. I like that it adds a little more texture, some more dimension to the design. Yeah, it looks really cool. So like the way it looked on this, it, it kind of made it wider in some places. Mm -hmm. And so you can see where this leads to some inspiration that, yeah, you could throw a six millimeter bead in here. That's, you know, rounder. You could throw an eight millimeter. It, it just kind of, if you wanted to do four, the only trick that you run into is your tension because you have to force it to taper down and then taper up and then taper down. Mm -hmm. But after yeah. you've made a few of these, you will find that a lot less challenging to do. Like once you've made two or three and you'll get brave and try all that crazy stuff. And it's really yeah. fun. Maybe yeah, let's start. Cool. Ooh, oh yeah. So it's yeah. probably good to start with it kind of staying even and then, and then you can adjust. Can I show where, how far I've gotten? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let me flip my camera. that bigger. All right. This is so far. I've just gone for the seed beads and the Tila beads. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Look at that. And I, I've just done at first I did all copper and then I switched to just a random pattern of seed beads. So a random pattern is cute too. I like that. Yeah. I'm excited. Oh, oh my God. I look, I love it even more. Once I put my arm there, I'm like, Ooh, this is going to be fun to wear. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. They're cool. so cool. They're super cool. To all right. With. So this part, this is the part that'll take folks, you know, maybe, you know, it'll take you some time to get through this, put on a good podcast, a video, chit chat yep. with someone, you know, start be chatting on the phone while you do it. Um, and then now we're going to, we're going to fast forward in time and you're <laughs> going to show us how, how to end the bracelet. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And they take, they take a while, but absolutely just enjoy that process because it's part of the fun. That's what we love about beading. But once you get, and I'm going to raise up a little bit here, we'll raise up and lift it up. Um, what I've got is the entire design here done. It's just kind of hanging out with my last row and I'm ready to taper it down. And when you get to the spot where you, where you feel like it might be at length, you can go ahead and start to measure. So just get some mm -hmm. tape measures out, start measuring from maybe like the center of your, your button. So hit your zero mark at the center and then just come on down and then just measure it to where um, you think you might want it to clasp and just knowing that your button loop, there's going to be, let me show you a little closer. There's going to be a knot and then a button loop and another knot. And if you want to make it adjustable, you could do another button loop and another knot. So um, that gives you some extra length that you can think about as you're looking at it. And then um, I would say make it adjustable just because some days I put them on and I feel like wearing them a little tighter and some days I want them to be mm. a little less like so more snug. So you can always make them adjustable. So let's see, what's the best way I can show you this? I'm gonna have to bring my camera a little bit more down. And I'm not loving this lime color. It's really hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> it really changes the, um, it makes it really cool. Yeah, it changes the, yeah, how your phone reads it. <laughs> yeah. All right, but can everyone see that okay? Do you want me to get closer? Or... Yeah, that close is always good. Close is good. Let's see how low I can get it to go. Um, hmm. Whatever's yeah. whatever's possible. I'm gonna put something under it. Right. Oh, good call. All right, that's a little better. I'll just I'll raise it every time I add a add a row. And this is beige. I don't know if you guys have seen the color change here, but this is what beige wildfire will look like. Okay. So you can see if you like that or not. And then I was using black on the last one. So this is a row of three seed beads. And I'm going to taper it down to two now. So just bring on two beads. Passing under the cords. And this is a nice gentle taper. It's nothing extreme. So it's you know, not too hard to do. Oops. 
I'm really close to the camera, so try not to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so on some of these designs, if you're like using um, beads that can handle it, like if they have a really large hole, like Mugis are good, you can do that again and repeat. Um, I did oh, not like do that on- Go yeah. back to the same beads. Yes, like if you're having a stubborn taper, like if you want to do something dramatic, Mm. What a lot of people. If you really need to go tighten it to, mm -hmm. to smaller, okay. So they would come under here, go back through those same beads again, and then they would pass back through them again, and that is just like a locked-in taper right there. Yeah, but for ours, it's a nice gradual taper that you don't really need to do that. Yeah, it just works fine for me. It worked fine without, so I didn't bother. Yeah. But if you're having trouble, you can try that, and I'll, we're also going to have to do that to do our end. So. You'll get to see it here in the next row. So I'm bringing on just one bead now. And these are size 11, guys. So these are these are small beads. Yeah. And so it's going to sit right in the center here. I'm just passing through it. All right. So this one starts to wiggle wiggle itself out a little bit. Um, so for finishing it anyway, we need to do a knot in weaving in. So um, I am going to go back through the same bead. And so to do that, you know how we've been we've been passing under the cords and then we would get a new bead. Well, instead of getting mm -hmm. a new bead, I'm just going to go through the one that's there. Oh, okay. And it can be a little tricky. So um, what I do actually is I I take the the piece and I just turn it to the back side. So now you see how my thread's exiting here to the the side here and I'm above the cords. Mm -hmm. um, if you just take your hand and just flip it. Yeah. It's a lot easier if you're right-handed to get yourself through that bead again. And so what I'm doing now is just kind of pulling a little tight on my tails. And I'm just gonna go through it one more time. And there you go, that's how you would do a tightened taper if you wanted to do one of those. And then at this point, if you were carrying on with your stitching, you would come back through the bead from above the cords. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna do that because this is weaving in, but if, if this was something you were trying to continue on, you would just go through the bead here and it'll work, it'll pass through. And then just pull that through and carry on stitching straight down. Yeah. Um, to end it, uh, I'm gonna flip it back over to where we were here at the back. And we're gonna do hitch knot. So hang on, I'm gonna turn my board. Um, let's see. Okay, how visible is that? It's not visible at all. There we go. How's that? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. So I'm exiting from that 11 out I'm on the back here. And you see how there's those cords? Um, these ones right here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go under them with a the needle. Oops, hit that camera. Okay. Under that. and then just pull up a loop. It's gonna try to catch on your leather, so. But I'm just pulling up a loop with those cords there. And then just bring your needle back through that loop. It's just a hitch knot. Ah, cool. Oops. <laughs> Camera's super low. <laughs> smashing it, all right. We appreciate it. All right, and then you're gonna get something like that. You just pull each strand individually. It happens to me sometimes. Um, so there's one knot, and if you want to now, you can go ahead and put a, a dab of hypo cement, or we can do that in a minute. But um, now I'm going to go ahead and flip it back so that this is the front side again. And now I am going to go back through that bead, but then I'm going to travel um, the other direction up and trim. So sometimes um, if you're going to glue, you can get away with just doing that one knot, and that's fine. If you want to not use any glue, I'd recommend weaving up through a few rows. And all you're doing okay. is just backtracking through. I'm just trying to poke my leather. It's a little tight fit right here. Yeah, I've now you've gone through a few times. And that is probably the last pass I think I would safely try to put through this bead. And I'm working with a size 10 beading needle. If you're having trouble, switch to a 12 and see if you can that to work, but this one's going to be okay. All right. 
So this is the, let me bring this back over here somehow. Okay, so this is the front. We did a knot back here. We went back through the bead. So you could trim it here if you want. You could glue and trim. Um, I'll show you just going through the beads again in case anyone wants to weave in. So now I'm gonna pass back underneath the, the cords like this, right? But I'm gonna go back through this row. And it's easier to do like this, flipping it again and getting through it. Yeah, and you're flipping it over so that way when your needle's going through, it's always going through on the top side. We, uh, cause I'm right-handed and I have a really hard time maneuvering with my left. Yeah. So I flip it around. And, and the hardest exactly part for this is um, puncturing the leather is really easy to do like this. So I'm going real slow, just yeah. feeling it out. These um, bracelets, they, they're labor intense guys. And so when you're pricing your work, if you sell your work, charge accordingly, cause they are, um, they take a long time. Some of these can take you like four or five hours to make. Yeah, if you keep doing lots of wraps. Yeah, like I used to do some epic ones. I did a lady wanted oh five wrap ones, and oh my goodness, I'm wow. like, you know how long that's gonna take me? It's gonna take me a while. <laughs> yeah, this is a project you can kind of. I like how you're saying you kind of can just have it at your desk or to the side, and like whenever you're ready to add a few rows, you bring it over and you add a few rows. Like you, it's yeah. very easy to stop and start with this project. Exactly, and that's what I needed at the time of my life. When I was making the most of these. That was the kind of project I had to absolutely mm -hmm. have, like, have, and it was so perfect yeah. for me. I was really happy with it. So I just did that one time. I went back through. You see how you can just keep weaving back up. If you wanted to go yeah. again, you just flip it again, and your needle's on this side. And then you can come back up through your three row if you want. So I'm going to trim it now because I think you guys get the idea. So I'm going to push down. It's good. You can burn it too if you'd rather burn it. Um, I didn't do the glue, but if you wanted to, you just, you know, you come along with that hypocement little dot where we did our, our um, knots and do the same up here um, with that one. So that's what I'd recommend doing there. Um, we can take it off the board now. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll deal with, uh, we'll deal with these. So right up here at the top, I'm just going to bring that off. Back in. And grab a needle really quick. So right now at the bottom, your um, your knot is probably not near your beads, right? Oh, no, no, it's just. Yes, yeah, so you have your taper, but the knot that you put at the end is just, is way farther down wherever it happens to land. Yeah, and that's my, this is what I think is the back side of my bracelet. And mm -hmm. then this is the front side. And that's what the bottom looks like. And it, it was a strong job finishing that. It's not going to come undone. It's really great. Yeah. You can take some, some glue if you want and make it extra, extra. Um, but now we're just going to take this off here. And you can okay. just grab the rubber band and just pull it. It should come right off. Oops. I hooked it on my bracelet. <laughs> I always find a way to do sounds on silly. There we go. <laughs> okay, and now you've got this knot you don't need at the bottom. It'll be easy to work out. Let me just kind of push on it. A lot of people glue the knot on their leather too. I forgot to mention that, especially around the buttonholes. Yeah, just don't glue the one at the bottom that you want to take out. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to glue this one, but in this one, this one's not going to come loose on you. The ones that'll come loose yeah. on you are the ones your button pulls against. Uh, mm. Some folks do they do a barrel knot for that reason because the barrel knot will tighten as you pull against it. Yeah. But um, I always used to just put a dot of glue on my overhand knot and it was always fine. Yeah. All right. So you've got this at the bottom, and all you got to do is just kind of the same thing we did before. Let's just bring those around. The tails there, and then just help it. Help it sit as close as you can to the beads. Oh, you're off camera a little bit there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. also, let me go back. So, um, okay. in case anyone missed that, I'm just bringing the cords around and I'm keeping them as close to the work as I can. Bring those tails to the loop. And if you kind of just pinch everything like this, it'll help you keep your knot. It does not have to be like right up against your beads. Close as you can get it is just fine. And again, if you did a barrel knot here, that would work too. It'd give you more um, mm -hmm. precision. But those are, that's just like a separate class because those are special. 
Yeah. Sure. We can definitely do that sometime. But, um, I think that, I think Sarah's done some, right? She's yeah, some I think so. Stuff. Yeah, I think so. She's done so many cool nodding projects. And so this is fine. I mean, I think on my other one, I might've got it a smidge closer, but this does not need to be perfect. I mean, just get it as close as you can. Cool. And then measure. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take care of my tails really quick. I didn't show that yet. Um, it's kind of the same thing, but I'm gonna flatten ends. And if you can get both into an, the eye of the needle, fabo. If you can do that, that's great. Maybe. If do you want to um, lift your camera up a little bit at this point, or whatever? Oh, yeah. Whatever might make yeah. might make it easier for you. Yeah, I keep going off camera there. Okay, let's see here. All right, and so these are the tails of the, the one we started here. And what I'm going to do is just bring them through a needle. I flattened the ends. This is wildfire, so I did that trick. Sometimes I can get this to work with one. Sometimes I just need to do each tail individually. Sometimes yeah. I get lucky. So um, that one did not work. So we're going to push that down. There we go. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm threading the needle twice with the tails. If that's tricky, just work each tail individually. Because you know you got two strands there. All right. But I'm just showing you guys everything what I really what I actually really do. So even if it's a little bit weird. So the needle's got both of those ends on it. And I'm gonna bring it around the front and just pass back through if I can. This is how you would do weaving in. But I wanted to share also that if you wanted to skip this step, you can because remember our knot, our knot is right there. And if you wanted to put glue on it, you could just go ahead and cut it right now. If you mm -hmm. want to weave it in, just go back through. Try not to go through your leather. And also plan ahead to leave a little bit of length, you know, for that, because this is pretty short. Yeah. Though. Um, but it's, it's going to work. That's what it should be. Okay. And then I'll just go back through the two. Oops. And that's probably all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and trim there. I feel like that's good. Perfect. So push down, pull up. And now our Buttons free, everything's good. That's the, I think that's my front. I trimmed it at the back, so. All right, so now we just gotta bring it around, hold our button right there, and let's do another knot. Let's do another knot like right there. That should be pretty good. And in terms of spacing there, I guess you want the button to like be able to fit and not, but not yeah, be too and this big. button, this button is so nice because it has no dome. Buttons with a mm -hmm. dome need a longer uh, buttonhole, but this one um, is so nice because you could literally just do a flat measure and have it be fun. Cool. So that's why this is such a great beginner project. One thing that I'll do with my leather knots like these is um, pull each strand individually. So this makes them a lot less likely to come undone. And then we can just trim it. I didn't make mine adjustable. This was made with the scraps from one kit. So oh, wow. The leftover leather here, I was just kind of playing around and I used it. So I don't have the same amount of length on this one that I did on my original sample, but on my original, I did another set of knots. So you can have yeah. two. But on this one, I'm cool. just gonna trim it. I'm gonna trim it like, and trim it at an angle so it looks really pretty. Maybe like right there. And you could hypo like cement. That. If you put hypo cement on your knots, go in there with it. Like get the um, get the needle of the ooh, mine's got something funny happening. Um kind of in there like that. See? And you can stab it in there. Yeah. You that way the glue's kind of hidden inside. Yeah. It's, it, it can kind of give you like um a white flaky look if you get it on the outside of the leather and it's yeah. also likely to just rub off if it's because it has a coating like a nice really nice coating on it so um if you get it kind of tucked in there it's less likely to be rubbed off as well 
cool. That's the whole and thing. That's the, there it is. It's fabulous. It's done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I love that look of the double wrap. That is so pretty. Me too. And this one's going to be on um, on the tighter side. I didn't give myself all the length, but like I said, I was using leftovers. Yeah. But oh, also leather over time gets easier to work with. Like it, this mm -hmm. button will be easier to put on for me later. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it so much. That's so yeah, pretty. Yeah, really good. <laughs> awesome. Cool. I mean, I just love how the Tila beads just sparkle and like catch the light. They're so pretty. Oh, me too. I'm a I big fan. This. I mean, this was yeah. a stellar mix. I like this, the Tila beads mix that you made. Oh, no, we that was a fun collab coming. I remember I sent you this <laughs> yeah. list of like, all right, here's all the colors we could do that I think might be like feel coffee to me. And you like picked out your favorite. So I was like, it was a back and forth collab. It was it was great. <laughs> I love what we I came up with. I love the way you did the, um, but like you, every bead you sent me was perfect. So. <laughs> You're so like, like, how do I choose? <laughs> all? Can we just do all? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I wish. Let's do a 30 color <laughs> mix. We, the problem is you only get like one of each bead, but. <laughs> oh, exactly. But this one there was really go. good. You had like um, a really nice number of all the colors in there. So somebody sat there and counted. Respect to that person. No, we, it was a mix. It was definitely, we yeah. mixed, we did a whole big mix and, and put them in, but yeah, everyone should get okay. a, a few of it's every so color. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Pretty even, so. Oh, that looks great. Here, I'll give That's one something. last up. Oh, it looks great. I'll do one last update on mine. Yeah, let's see it. Got a little farther. Let's see. I got up to five Tila beads now is how far I am. So I think I'm going to just keep going with yeah. this pattern the whole way, just doing three rows of seed beads in a random mix. And then I think I might do the Tila beads in a little more of a pattern. Like I think I'm going to do the, at least the beige one, like every three, um, but I might, and then might mix up the others. So a little oh, bit of pattern, yeah. a little bit of random all mixed together. So I hope that gives people some more ideas of how they might want to do it. No, that's awesome. I, I'm kind of loving the um, the mixed up seed beads. And it'll make it easier. Yeah. To so. I can, yeah, I can grab whatever's there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Danielle, for showing us how to do this. Sure. This Thanks. is really fun. I and, have fun doing um, these again. I'm so glad. Yeah, and I'm so glad we could share it with so many people. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget that there is a PDF instructions with all of the details. So if you'd like to have that um, as well to look back on, um, check that out. It is linked in the description of this video. You can always rewatch this video, watch the replay and, you know, fast forward on or rewind on any step you'd like. Um, it is a resource for you. Um, and if you don't mind, if you could give this video a quick like, and if you're not subscribed to the Sam's Bead Shop YouTube channel, hit subscribe. We'd love to have you back for our future classes. We got one with you next week, right? Next Friday, yeah, we'll be back. Friday. We're going to awesome. do some, some brick stitch and maybe yeah. a little fringe. I'm thinking there might, I don't Ooh. know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You're going to make, you're, you're going to start creating the sample and we'll see yeah. what happens. <laughs> I already know Perfect. two that I'm using, but the others I'm not. Sure, it's good. There'll be some seed beads, yeah. maybe the yellow flowers, and then the rings. Yeah, we wanted to use that other TR cast piece in the box, the rings. So we'll yep. be showing that off next week. So thank you everyone again and have a lovely weekend. Bye have everyone. A great weekend.